YouTube, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Tina and I make videos on lifestyle, home, and DIY projects every single week. For today's video, I thought it'd be fun to show you guys three different wall art project ideas. And we're gonna be using some really fun techniques, some that are new to me, and then some that are very nostalgic. I think that you'll really like these. And I also wanna give a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. They have a really good offer for you guys, so more on that later. But before we get into it, don't forget to like and subscribe down below if you haven't already and let's go ahead and get started. For this first project, I just got in a bag of instant paper mache. This is a four pound bag, so I'm very excited to make a bunch of different projects with it. But my idea for today's video is to put this on a canvas. I've never tried it before and I haven't really seen any tutorials on it, so I think this is going to work. It's gonna add in a lot of texture and I'm excited to get started. I always like to gesso my canvases first, so with the paintbrush, I'm just painting on one even layer on the entire canvas. Once that's dry, I'm drawing my design with a little help from some round objects around the house. So first, I'm drawing a circle with a roll of tape. Then around it, I'm creating a crescent moon shape, kind of just hugging that initial circle. And this design is inspired by a piece that I saw online by Pauline Stanley, and I'll have the original linked below. I'm keeping this piece quite simple just because I'm experimenting with this paper mache for the first time, but feel free to drop whatever design you'd like. To get started with the instant paper mache clay, I'm taking about a scoop and a half of this in a small container and I'm pouring that into a glass bowl. I did about half the amount of water as the paper mache and I started mixing it up. There are different ratios that you can use for this, but depending on what consistency you're looking for, you can add more or less water. And I gradually added in more water until the paper felt really nice and workable. Now all we have to do is stick that onto our canvas and I'm just basically squishing it within the design that we drew up. The instant paper mache that I'm using claims to stick onto most canvases and the mixture is made with recycled paper and paste so all you have to do is add water and you're good to go. It was actually pretty easy to work with and kind of felt like using dough and sticking that onto a canvas. And since I got such a big bag of this, I definitely plan on creating some larger projects with it. I feel like this product is very much geared towards kids and school projects, but with some imagination, you can make so many cool and trendy projects with these simple materials. So maybe we can make a fun sculpture or a vase in the future. Let me know what you guys want to see me make with this in the comments below. Using it on this canvas was a great introduction to to the material and I actually found it pretty easy to add on top of itself. So you'll see that I'm just building upon it and smoothing it out so that it looks like one piece. I also kept a more watery consistency paper mache on the side and I was kind of using it like a slip mixture to smooth out some larger seams as well. For the rays, I made little coils just like you would with clay and I attached them to the sun and smoothed it all out and it looks pretty good. The dry time on this is pretty quick in comparison to regular paper mache, so I left it overnight to dry. It is the next day now. The texture is really cool and it has definitely hardened, so I think this is a really fun idea. And if you want to, you could sand this down to make it smooth, but I of course love the texture, so we're gonna keep it like this. So I ended up actually flipping the canvas over so that the moon would face the other way and I just liked it this way much better. And for the background, I'm creating a rusty color with some browns, reds, and yellows. We're gonna water down this paint to create a sheer layer and you guys know I love me a good textured background. So I'm brushing it on as well as dabbing it with a paper towel to get a multi-dimensional effect. This is a technique usually used in watercoloring, but it totally works when you water down acrylic paints like this, so if you haven't tried it, you definitely need to. And you'll see that I'm darkening up some parts in the design by using less water with my paint, and this way the paint is a little bit thicker, and it adds more depth into the background, so you'll see that I'm using it on the tip of the moon as well as some other areas to really highlight it. And since my paint is so watery, you might notice some of it bleeding onto the paper mache, which is totally fine because we're gonna cover it up afterwards.
gonna let that dry for a couple of hours before moving on. All right, so now I'm gonna paint right on the paper mache parts with an off-white acrylic paint. I really only needed one coat to cover this, so that was really nice, and I absolutely love these tones together, but let me know in the comments what color palette you guys would do with this design. And since this is going on paper mache, I did find it to suck up the color pretty nicely, and I was trying not to get too many brush strokes so that it really looked like the paper mache was this color. There's something about having 3D elements and texture to a piece that makes it come alive, and I really love how this piece came together. The paper mache was a lot of fun to experiment with, and I'm excited to use it again in the future. And I would also 100% recommend adding a frame to your canvases for an elevated look. Before we jump into the next project, I wanted to talk about today's video sponsor, Skillshare. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I love Skillshare. And if you haven't heard of Skillshare yet, it is an online learning community filled with thousands of classes for creators. So you can explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in your creativity. And personally, I love taking their art classes just so that I can learn new skills for projects. But recently, I've been taking their freelance and entrepreneurship classes. These are very helpful to me since I'm still navigating the world of being a full-time creator. Creator. And this month I've been taking a class by Andy J Pizza called Social Media for Creatives, five exercises to power your freelance career. This class has been awesome, so I totally recommend it to you guys. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. They have a really awesome offer going on right now. So the first 1000 of my subscribers to click on the link below are gonna get a free month trial of their premium membership. Make sure to check it out so you can start exploring your creativity today and let's go ahead and jump to the next project. For this next project, we're gonna do some sun printing, also known as cyanography, cyanography or cyanotype. I hope I'm saying that right, but I basically got a kit. This is super easy to use. And fun fact, I was part of photography club like in elementary school, and I vividly remember using this as one of the projects. I thought it was just so cool. And as I was scrolling through some home decor websites, I noticed that they had some art prints that were very similar to this style. So I thought I would show you guys how it works. It's a really cool process. And I think it's gonna look amazing. So first we're gonna go outside and pick our items. Okay, so I'm walking around my backyard and and there were some really big storms, so there are branches everywhere. But look, I think these are actually perfect. These will definitely not last over the winter, so I think I might as well cut them now. And yeah, lots to choose from all the way over there. Let me go pick some leaves. It's freezing, I should have worn a jacket. I'm back inside and my backyard did not disappoint. This is honestly the perfect project, especially for fall time. Oh my God, look how beautiful these are. I am obsessed. Fall colors are just the prettiest. And of course you're not gonna see the colors, but I'm just gonna appreciate this anyways. So it's nice to have some of these larger leaves and then have some smaller ones and also little wispy boys over here so we can arrange them all together. I'm gonna play around with these and make a couple. So let's see what we can make. The instructions say to use a piece of cardboard on the bottom, but I'm going to use a canvas just because I think it's the perfect size for this project. And we're gonna face the blue side of the paper up. You should be doing this in a darker room, so I apologize now for the lighting, but I'm going to arrange all of the leaves on the paper. I really love the look of these wispy leaves, so I'm placing a taller one next to a shorter one here. And in the opposite side in the other corner, I also placed a leaf and a little bunny tail looking guy next to it. I plan on cutting this piece down, so this extra corner is just a little bonus. Now you wanna place the acrylic sheet that also came in the kit right on top of the paper. We're going to sandwich our leaves in there so that it is nice and flat. And if you need to, you can go ahead and lift it up again and just move some of the items around. And if you end up using larger 3D items like keys, they don't have to be weighed down so you can skip this step. I found an extra sunny spot in one of the rooms and I'm going to place this directly in the sunlight. We're gonna leave this here for five minutes and the paper should start looking lighter as the sun shines on it. You can also do this outside in direct sunlight or even on an overcast day. 
And to explain some of the science behind this, of course, I had to look it up. The sunprint paper is coated with light-sensitive chemicals, so when you place objects on the paper, they actually block the light and turn it white, while the paper around them remains blue. This is also known as blue printing, and using this paper is actually the easiest way to create a cyanotype. You can also buy a two-part kit mixture with the chemicals to create your own, which I think I'm going to buy and try again in the future. After the five minutes were up, I quickly moved the paper out of the light and then I removed the leaves. Immediately, you can see the print on them and I think it looks so cool. To stop the sun printing process, we're going to dip this into a bath of water and right away you'll notice that the print turns white and I'm just gonna leave this in the water for about one minute. I just placed it back onto the canvas to dry, but look. Oh my god, I'm pretty obsessed. This looks amazing. Like, look at all of this detail. It's so beautiful. And I think it should dry darker. I'm gonna let this sit out and then I'm gonna work on a couple more. Once it's dried, you can display this however you'd like. I'm using a floating frame for this project because I think it pairs perfectly and I'm just gonna cut this down to size. This was such a fun and easy project to do and I'm seriously obsessed with the end result. I mean, how cool do these look? I love that you can take items from nature and create such a beautiful piece and I'm excited to try even more ways to use this amazing technique. I'm using watercolor paper for this project, but you can use any materials that you'd like. And I thought it'd be kind of cool to use a canvas as my palette, so I plan on using this over and over for paint projects. And eventually, one day, this canvas is going to become a masterpiece in itself. So this is a little bonus wall art idea as well. But let me know if you've ever tried this before and how it came out. So I'm laying out my acrylic paint on it and I chose a few greens as well as some white and black and this is going to help us create different variations of the green. I'm basically going to be painting blobs around this entire canvas so I'm taking my paintbrush and dipping it into this beautiful sage color. And each one of these blobs is going to be imperfect so you can make these large or small depending on how many you want on the page. Usually I mix up my paints with a palette knife, but since we're creating variations of the same color, I'm going straight in with my brush and this is just quicker and also easier to carry the same color from blob to blob. In the end, this is gonna look like an ombre of green, but it also would be fun to do different colors if you want something more vibrant. Also, I know watercolor paper is not meant for acrylics, but I just like using it because of the slight texture it has and it also holds the paint really well. After all the blobs are dry, we're gonna go ahead and make faces on each one of them. And I'm going after a more minimal look, so I'm doing some line drawings for this. And I'm trying my best not to lift the pencil as I'm doing it. Each one is gonna look a little bit different than the other, and I think it adds so much personality to this piece. This project is inspired by a TikTok challenge, which originally is just a fun art exercise to get your creative juices flowing, but I think it makes for such a cool decor piece, so we're definitely going to frame it. I really love this idea when I first saw it, and I just thought that it'd be so cool to do with any media and any drawing style to make it your own. So all my faces are on the blobs, and it is now dry, so to finish up this project, I'm just going to frame it with a mat on top. I love minimal art prints and this one was so much fun to do. It was simple to create but still challenged me to get creative. And if you want to see more versions of this project, I will link the TikTok down below and I cannot wait to see how you guys put your own spin on it.
Okay, those projects were really fun to make and I would love to hear your thoughts on them. Let me know in the comments which one was your favorite. And if you have any requests on what I should try next time, leave those in the comments below as well. I would love to hear them. And again, a big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. The first 1,000 people will get a one month free trial of their premium membership. So don't forget to check out my description box for all those details. If you're inspired by any of these projects and recreate them, make sure that you post them over on Instagram and tag me so I can see them and like them. Them. And of course, I will share some of your recreations on the screen here as well. It always just makes my day seeing your projects, so thank you for sharing them with me. And that is it for today's video. Stay inspired, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!